Today, I'll be ranking every Premier League team on their performance this weekend, as well as looking forward to the next Premier League fixture and how they might do. The first game we have was Crystal Palace versus Liverpool at Selhurst Park. Overall, Crystal Palace put up a really strong performance, but ended up losing 2-1, ending up with 10 men for the last 15 minutes. Liverpool absolutely dominated possession, but didn't really create many chances. There wasn't anything clear cut from them until they were playing against 10 men. In addition, the last couple of minutes were played with the backup goalkeeper for Crystal Palace, so it's a difficult game to rank. Throughout the majority of the game, this is how I would have ranked it. You know, Crystal Palace outperforming their usual averages, Liverpool were a bit underwhelming considering, you know, how well they usually do at Selhurst Park. So overall, I would have ranked it there. But for a team that won the game and a team that lost the game, I don't think you can do that. So I've got to move Liverpool up to a C. It's really good that they're getting the job done. They're getting the job done late as well. So it shows a lot of fight and heart in the team. And then again, I don't think you can keep a team that lost above a team that won, especially because they got a red card. You know, even though it was harsh, you know, it, it, it was given by a Premier League referee. Therefore, I'm going to settle for both of them in the C tier. Brighton Burnley was the next fixture at the Amex Stadium and I really thought Brighton, after beating Brentford, would kick on and do a great job, especially after Burnley lost to Wolves. But that's not what happened. This game finished 1-1. Brighton did dominate possession, chances created, shots on goal. So many of the stats were good for Brighton, but they couldn't get the number of goals that they needed to. And that was largely part to Burnley's goalkeeper of James Trafford. He had a standout man of the match performance without doubt, and that's what makes this ranking really difficult. I think when you're coming up against a team that is struggling at the bottom of the league and one of the worst forms there are, and you don't get the job done, I think that has to leave you in D. So then that would leave us with Burnley. Definitely not a D, potentially a C or a B here. You know, they didn't play fantastic to the point where, you know, they absolutely smashed them. It's an A. They sat back, defended, and got a key point. For me, I'm going to put them at the top of the C tier because it was a good performance for them, but they're still not up to the standard of Premier League football, at least in my opinion, yet. The next game we had was Man United versus Bournemouth at Old Trafford. One of the easiest to rank for me because Bournemouth winning 3-0 away from home. That's absolutely huge, especially against a huge team like Man United. But where this really happened was the clinicalness of Bournemouth. In fact, they actually scored four. It was late given uh, VAR overturned the fourth goal. So it ended up being 3-0, but it could have been four. There wasn't really too many clear-cut chances for Man United. And I think that says a lot about how they're performing at the minute. For me, it's an instant F. You know, at Old Trafford, what used to be such a difficult place to go play, now you're getting teams like Bournemouth winning 3-0. But I don't think you can take away from Bournemouth's performance. Definitely, you know, the first A or maybe the only A of this weekend because they were just stand out. They were clinical when they needed to be. You know, creating more chances with less possession says a lot about the team right now. This is the first time then we have a game we can predict for the next weekend because next weekend is Liverpool versus Man United at Anfield. Now I'm doing these football predictions on a website called Pookie. It allows you to predict the football results of all of the top leagues in the world and then you can actually earn money for how well you do compared to everyone else. My sign up link's in the description. If you use that, it'll support the channel. So I'd appreciate that. And I'll see you on the leaderboards. Cheers. Now, Liverpool and Man United have two of the best clean sheet records in the Premier League, believe it or not. But in a derby game, that could change where you have to go out, you have to full send. But to be honest, even with United trying that, I think they're going to be a bit like when I went to Newcastle. They were playing away from home. They knew they weren't good enough. So they're just going to sit back and defend. So for that reason, I'm going to have United not score on a goal again. You know, if they couldn't score against Bournemouth, so it's going to be a 2-0 or 3-0 Liverpool. I think the form Liverpool are in, I'm going to put it down to 3-0. I think if Bournemouth can beat them by 3-0 away from home, I think Liverpool could beat them off 3 or 4. So I'm going to stick with 3-0 Liverpool as my prediction. The next game this weekend was Sheffield United versus Brentford at Bramall Lane. Sheffield United under a new manager of Paul Heckingbottom, or technically an old manager that they've brought back in. But it still worked with that new manager bounce, winning 1-0 against Brentford. That's obviously a huge result for them after they're getting beat 5-0 by Burnley and then 2-0 by Liverpool and being bottom of the league. That is just absolutely fantastic for them. I think he did what Sheffield United do best. You know, it's not attractive football, but it gets the job done. A 1-0, you know, keeping them out defensively. For me, it was a really good performance and therefore I'm going to put them in the B tier. Brentford might be the most hit and miss team in the Premier League at the minute. They do really well one weekend then really badly the weekend after. For me, this performance wasn't up there for them. They do have a couple of injuries, but still, it's a D performance. Next up, we had Wolves versus Nottingham Forest at the Molyneux Stadium. Wolves are one of those teams that are operating near the bottom half of the league. But I feel like if things have gone their way with VAR, with some penalty decisions, I really feel that they could be a lot higher up the league. So this was a surprise result for me. They ended up drawing 1-1. 
Wolves dominated possession, shots, shots on target, all of the key statistics, but they still didn't get the win. So for me, it's a clear C, and I think Nottingham Forest, although the result is better for them, at the same time, they didn't offer too much there, so they're going to fly into C as well because it was very just defensive and trying to get the job done. Next up, we had Aston Villa versus Arsenal at Villa Park, and Villa Park is becoming one of the most difficult grounds in the league to go and play. They had just beaten Man City, and there was an absolute carbon copy. They went and beat Arsenal 1-0 as well. In a slightly different performance, I'd say that, you know, Aston Villa were really, really strong defensively in this game. I thought Emi Martinez played fantastic. And to counter that, Arsenal created a lot of chances. They had a lot of, you know, dominant possession, just lackluster in front of goal. Missed a lot of big chances. So for me, another easy ranking. I think Aston Villa for a fine, fine performance once again, fly into the B spot. And Arsenal, unfortunately, going to rock in the C middle spots. That leads us on to the next game we can predict, which is Arsenal versus Brighton at the Emirates Stadium. I think the way Arsenal were playing recently, especially at the Emirates, is so dominant. They're really a good team at home. And Brighton have been struggling. So it's definitely going to be an Arsenal win. Both teams score a lot of goals, two of the highest average goals in the league, you know, both three or more than three goals. But 50% of Arsenal's game this year have had both teams to score. And, you know, if we think about 50% of the league, I think Brighton's attack is in the top 50%. So they're definitely going to score. I think it'll be a 3 or 4 1 Brighton. In this case, I'm going to take 3 1 Arsenal as my prediction. The first game on Sunday was Everton versus Chelsea at Goodison. Overall, it was a really tight contested fixture for most of the game, it was 0-0. Eventually, Everton came out as the winners, 2-0, fantastic for them, especially after the points deduction. Chelsea dominated possession, but they just couldn't turn that possession into anything meaningful, you know, no goals, no real clear-cut chances where they should have scored. Countering that, Everton so clinical with the ball, getting two goals from only four shots on target. Overall, I think Everton definitely, you know, p potentially could have been in this A slot. But for me, I think I'm going to put them in the B slot. Chelsea, you could put in the E or D spot. But realistically, I only want to put them in the E spot to fill it. They weren't that horrific at all. They created a lot of chances. They just didn't do a lot with it. So we'll put them, you know, bang in the middle of D. That means we have another fixture to predict. I think Chelsea will win this game despite Sheffield United coming into a bit of form. I just think away from home, Sheffield United have never been that strong. Because of what we saw today, I don't think Chelsea will be too clinical in front of goal. So I'm going to go for 2-0 Chelsea. And we can predict this game. It's a really tough one. I'm thinking low scoring and I'm either thinking 1 or 2-0 Everton or the draw. Maybe 2-1. I think overall Everton compact at the back. I'll go 1-0 Everton but not certain on this one. The next game up was Fulham versus West Ham at Craven Cottage and another surprise result. I mean, I know Fulham had just won 5-0, but they went and won 5-0 again at a much harder opposition. I mean, just this is just shocking to me. I mean, instantly, you know, they dominated possession, they dominated chances created, a really strong performance. They're instantly going into the A's. And then West Ham, probably favourites to win that game. And losing 5-0, not even scoring. I want to put them in E to fill it still, but they've got to go in F. I mean, there's just no way about around it, really. Can Fulham rebound against Wolves in the next fixture? What I know is neither team like clean sheets, so I'm definitely expecting both teams to score. Their attacks are much better than their defence. In terms of a home victory, away victory, it's really hard because Fulham, uh, because Wolves are a lot better than I think their you know league table dictates. But at home, I think I'm going to have to go for West Ham, but it will be tight, so I'll go 2-1 West Ham. But I'll reassess this and see if Ariola, West Ham's starting goalkeeper, is back before the game, because I rate him a lot higher than Fabianski, who plays in that when he's injured. Luton versus Man City was a surprisingly close matchup this weekend. I really thought, you know, they'd absolutely dominate them and destroy them 4 or 5 nil. Maybe the fact that Erling Haaland wasn't there made it a little bit more difficult for Man City, but they still ended up winning 2-1, but a great performance from Luton nonetheless. Of course, they were dominated on possession, shots, stats. We all knew that was going to happen regardless. In terms of rankings, though, I think I'm going to put Man City in the C tier, but, you know, debated putting them in the D tier because at the end of the day, it is Luton versus Man City. Man City weren't that bad, though. They create a lot of chances. They just missed their striker. You know, that's what they need, just a goal scorer. Alvarez missed a couple of chances. And yeah, there's a bit of lack of fluidity as well because obviously that striker partnership or those, you know, front four don't really play together too often. So yeah. Ranking Luton then is really difficult because they did lose, but they could be, you know, low end of B or high end of C because it's Man City they lost to and they only just lost and they really had good chances to win the whole game. I think I'm actually going to leave them potentially controversially in B. 
Because this Man City team, they had a treble winning side. They won literally everything last year. Most of their team was fully fit. They just missed their striker and they've got plenty of depth there as well. So yeah, we're going to go for B. That means we can look at Man City versus Crystal Palace. Now, Crystal Palace, we played better than they fought and Man City played worse than we fought. So... I think because of the amount of points you get for going over under two and a half goals here, I'll go with 2-0 Man City despite we know the fact. Yeah, I'm, I'm thinking that's a really good prediction for the potential points it can gain. If you are confused about how Pookie works, it is really simple, but my beginner's guide is here and that covers everything, so watch that. Oh, I really want Luton to get some more points. I want them to stay in the league. But up against Bournemouth... Have they overperformed against Man United or is they coming into good form? That's the difficulty. You know, the amount of points you get for a 1-1 is huge there. I think I'm going to go for 1-1 just for the amount of points you get. But realistically, it could be a 2-1, 3-1, looting away from home. One of the hardest to predict. We'll go 1-1, but who knows? I forgot to do Brentford, Aston Villa. Now, Aston Villa in good form, Brentford in bad form, but really difficult to predict. I do think Villa will come out with the points and it will be tight. So it's either 2-1 or 1-0 Aston Villa. We'll go for the goals, 2-1. The final game of the weekend then was Spurs versus Newcastle at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. And to be honest, Spurs were just different class. They ended up winning 4-1, really late goal from Newcastle, could have been 4-0, uh, a lot of late goals to be honest. But overall, I think Spurs dominated possession, dominated clear chances. Overall, it, they were just different levels today. Like we do know Newcastle have a lot of injuries, but yeah, they could not compete with this Spurs side. Spurs, which you can barely see here, are going to go into the bottom end of A. It's top B or bottom A. I think the way they played was just really good. And then to be honest, Newcastle's a D or an E. Because I've still not filled E, we're going to put E. I know Spurs are a tough fixture. I know travelling all the way down to London is going to be difficult. But the way they played, you would expect them to put up more of a fight. And to be honest, the game was over by the time they had scored. So, yeah, I just never thought, you know, throughout the match they were going to get anything done there. It was always going to be Spurs winning. So, tough, tough E, but it's an E that nonetheless. Final few fixtures then for Nottingham Forest versus Spurs. Spurs don't really keep clean sheets. We'll go 3-1. I think they dominate, especially if Son plays like he did today. Then Newcastle versus Fulham, a really tricky one to know where to go. I think because Newcastle are favourites, I'll go for a Fulham win, but it would be tight. I'll go for 2-1 Fulham and hope they can continue that goal scoring form. If you did enjoy this, please drop a like, subscribe to the channel. There'll be more football content coming soon. All the best. Cheers.